Okay, so example four for lesson one one, chapter one one. For what values of x is g of x equals 2 minus the absolute value of x increasing? For what value is it decreasing? So the easiest way to answer a question of increase and decreasing graph is to graph the function. So it's asking about increasing, it's asking about decreasing. Just to give you a visual of what it looks like. So this is not the graph of this function, but just in general. If I have a function that does something like this, let's say it goes like that. This is not that equation. This is just some generic graph I'm making up. If the graph, as I go this direction from left to right, as I go that direction, if I'm going upward, it's increasing. If I'm going downward, it's decreasing. And if it's some weird graph, let's say instead of having an arrow there, let's say it just right there starts going like, like straight across, like that, then it's constant. Okay. So if the graph, as you go from left to right, as the graph goes upward, it's increasing. If the graph starts going downward, it's decreasing. And if it's flat, it's constant. And if it asks you for intervals of increase or decrease, it's asking you for what the x values are. So here's my x-axis here, this green line, my x-axis. And let's just say this right here is point A. We'll call this right here point B. We'll call this point C. And this is negative infinity this way forever, and that's positive infinity that way forever. So if it asks for interval of increase, decrease on that picture there, it's increasing all the way from negative infinity until you hit A, right? So that's the highest point on the graph right there before it starts going down. So it increases from negative infinity to A. Then from A to B, it's decreasing. So it decreases from A to B. And then it increases from B to C. And then all the way from C to infinity, it is constant. So when it's asking for intervals of increase or decrease, it's saying from x equals what to x equals what does the graph go up? Is this, are we supposed to write this on the It wouldn't hurt, just so you have what it yeah, looks like. Yeah, I was yep. just writing it up. Yeah, the that's fine. Just somewhere in the... Is yeah. that another ink or increasing thing right there? INC, yes. The one? Yep. It's INC for the first one, increase, DEC, decrease, INC, increase, constant for the bottom one. Okay, that bottom one doesn't happen very often. It, graphs aren't typically constant. They usually go up or down. Uh, they can be constant, but it's just for the sake of math problems and math books, they don't happen very often because constant doesn't happen in real life very often. So if we take a look at the graph we're considering in intervals of increase and decrease for, g of x equals 2 minus the absolute value of x. If I'm graphing an absolute value function, absolute value of something, whatever the rest of the stuff is, I'm going to focus on the absolute value part of it. If I'm going to graph the absolute value of something, here's what I want to do to pick the x values, is I'm going to say what makes something equal to zero. So if we look at the problem we got up here, we're doing g of x equals 2 minus the absolute value of x. So this is my absolute value part of the problem. I don't care about the rest of the problem when I'm deciding what x's I want to pick. <coughs> okay, what are we taking the square root of in this, or sorry, the absolute value of in this problem? Absolute value, absolute value of what? Probably a. X. x. X, right? So, I was saying if you have absolute value of something, you want that something to equal zero. So if we're doing the absolute value of x, I want x to equal zero. x equals zero when x is zero, right? So that's pretty straightforward. If it said absolute value of 2x minus 6, now all of a sudden you got 2x minus 6 equals 0. you got to solve it. Okay? So again, you have to find out what makes the contents of the absolute value bars equal to 0. In this case, it's obviously 0. Once you figure out what that number is, that number has to be picked. And then you want to go both directions from that number, smaller and bigger than that number. So if I make an xy chart out of this problem, make x my left column, I'm going to go negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Again, I have to pick 0 because that's what makes the inside of the absolute value equal to 0. And then I need to go smaller than 0 and bigger than 0. I'd like to pick integers, so I'm going to pick negative 1 and negative 2 smaller, positive 1 and positive 2 bigger. 
Okay. I'm going to make the chart kind of like I did the other day where I'm going to make a three column chart. The middle column is going to be the expression we're trying to evaluate. And the third column is going to be our g of x. g of x also known as y. So if, if we're considering graphing an xy function, think of the function notation g of x, f of x, something like that. that that's the y variable. So what does absolute value bars do to a number? It makes right? it positive. Makes it positive. Right. The absolute value bars make a number positive. So if there's a number inside absolute value bars, it makes it positive. So I'm going to have 2 minus the absolute value of negative 2. I'm going to have 2 minus the absolute value of negative 1. 2 minus the absolute value of 0. 2 minus the absolute value of 1. 2 minus the absolute value of 2. Okay. I picked my x's. Again, the zero I had to pick because that's what makes the contents equal to zero. And then I picked smaller and bigger. The other ones were just random numbers I picked, but I, again, I picked small numbers close to the number I have to pick. I substitute each of those numbers in place of x in the expression, and then I work it out. Absolute value of two, negative two is what? Positive two. So two minus two is? Zero. zero. Absolute value of negative one is? Positive 1, 2 minus positive 1 is? 1. one. Absolute value of 0 is? 2. The absolute value of 0 is? 0. 0. 2 minus 0 is? 2. 2. Thank you, Zach. Um, absolute value of 1 is 1. So 2 minus 1 is 1. one. Absolute value of 2 is 2. 2 minus 2 is 0. So if, if the contents is a positive number, it stays positive. If it's a negative number, it switches to positive, And then you carry out whatever operations are there. So my points that I get are negative 2, 0, negative 1, 1, 0, 2, 1, 1, and 2, 0. So if I quick plot those points, again, you just, you don't have to make, uh, if you want to use graph paper to graph, fine. If your answer is increasing, decreasing, um, x-intercepts, domain range, anything like that, you need to draw a graph that you can pinpoint that information out of it. If the directions are graph this function, I want you to graph it on graph paper. If I'm supposed to be reading a graph, I want to see a graph graph on graph paper. But if you're interpreting a graph telling me increase and decrease in domain ranging, x-intercepts, y-intercepts, anything like that, you draw a graph good enough for you to see what you need to see. All right? So negative 2, 0, negative 1, 1, 0, 2, 1, 1, 2, 0. It creates this look here. Here's my x-axis, here's my y on my y-axis. And what I want you to see here, and sometimes people mess up on this because it's an arrow pointing, another thing it's decreasing. So this both sides are going downward, right? But when I make the decision about increase and decreasing, I'm somewhere on the graph and I'm moving this direction, I'm moving to the right. So if I'm on this part of the graph and moving in this direction, I'm going upward, right? When do I stop going upward? When x equals what? Zero. Zero. All right. So again, that's the question. So the, we're concerned about numbers on the x-axis. I'm starting at negative infinity. I'm ending at positive infinity. And I'm looking for when is it going up, when is it going down. All right. So it's going up all the way from negative infinity, right? So it's, it's going from down here. So starting down here, it's going up, 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 until it hits x equals yeah. zero. So it's increasing from negative infinity to zero. Again, intervals of increase, intervals of decrease, intervals where it's positive, intervals where it's negative, all these intervals are always about x. From x equals this to x equals this, this happens. So if it's x, it's always negative, or what? Well, it's just, it's increasing. <laughs> We're concerned about x, not y. All right. So the increase is the y component of this, right? So it's like going, going up first is y and down if, is x? No, if it's going up, when, from x equals what to x equals up, uh, what is it going up? So it's going up all the way from negative infinity until we hit zero. The graph is. And then once we hit zero, right here, now we're still on the graph, now we're going downward, right? So, that's so now the graph's decreasing. Starting at zero and it decreases to when? It goes down. It goes down for how long? From x equals zero to what? Two. To two. At any book. But if I put in three, I get two minus absolute value of three, which equals negative, negative one. Still going down, right? Yeah. When does it stop going down? 
Never. Never. So it goes all the way to where? South Carolina. Infinity. All the way to? Infinity. Infinity. Is it possible because you were trying to think of funny things to say while I was teaching it instead of paying attention to what I was saying when I was doing it? Like, I don't know, like instead of infinity, you said South Carolina, and that was kind of humorous, right? Well, you said it never stops. Okay. So it would go to South Forever Carolina. is infinity, forever is negative infinity. All right, so let's keep it mathematical. So it, all it is is asking when's the graph going up, when's the graph going down. The graph's going up as we go that direction. We always go that direction, the graph's going up all the way from negative infinity to zero. These intervals always are about x. It's asking what x equals. So from here to here. Negative or what? It, all the way there is negative infinity, all the way there is positive infinity. So this, this horizontal axis goes forever in both directions to infinity. Okay. All right. So all the way to negative infinity. So if it's just going down with this arrow like this, it just means continues all the way to negative infinity this way. That arrow means continues all the way to negative infinity, to positive infinity that way. All right, but you can see if I'm moving that direction from negative infinity to positive infinity, this direction here, the graph's going up until I get to zero, and then it goes down until I get to infinity. X equals negative infinity to X equals zero, it's going up. From X equals zero to X equals positive infinity, it's going down. That's all it's asking for. Graph's going up, graph's going down, graph's going up, graph's constant. From here to here, from here to here, from here to here. So every interval is about here's where it starts, here's where it ends. That's A, that's B, that's what you write down. Your interval. That's one. From X equals to X equals what? So, like, say, um, you know how you have it on green on this side? Mm -hmm. Say it went down and then up, so then that would be decreasing and increasing. Yeah, so like you're suggesting, what if it did this and yeah. then this and then that? So, and then let's say it's like this, right? So this bit here would be a decreasing interval. This bit here would be an increasing interval. Uh -huh. This bit here would be a decreasing interval. And as functions get more complicated, you can get multiple terms like that. Uh, right now in Algebra 2, beginning of Algebra 2, we aren't going to see anything that complicated. But um, there are functions that do go up and down and up and down, and they increase and decrease. Uh, sine functions, for example, they for infinity, they, they go up for a while, down, then up, then down, and then they just keep going like this. That's a sine graph right there. Just does that forever. So, and again, if you had to identify intervals of increase, decrease there, there'd be infinity answers. I usually say from here to here. I, I just, for a sine curve, I would say start here and end here, let's say, and then you don't have to have infinity answers. So, all right?